Where's Snarls? Where Join, is Snarls? Joins allergic to her. No, I'm not. I know. Love Snarls would have been fun here for like 10 seconds, and then and she ripped been. the whole board off the fucking <laughs> 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 And then sat there and barked at us the whole podcast because we didn't pay attention so to her. So she would have contributed more than Carl usually does. Yeah, she would have filled <laughs> in perfectly. <Carl. laughs> Actually, about the same. Mm. Rip shit off the table and bark for a few hours. Yeah, yeah that sounds about she right. She probably wouldn't say anything offensive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Touche. New guest host, Snarls Barkley. Yeah, Snarls Barkley. <laughs> One day. Like here's a, he'll get a, like a fake chewy mic. <laughs> <laughs> here, you go, here you go, Snarls. So it'll just be squeaking going yeah. on. Like, <laughs> <all the> time. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the Bar Talk Podcast. I am your co-host, Jordan Shabbat of the Speedwell Tavern, joined once again, always, by Dan Mahoney. What up? And we got Andy and Fish over there helping us out, as always, from Inebriot. Hello. And today we're going to cover, we got a great question. When you guys have been sending us awesome questions, um, you know, pretty much every episode since we've started doing the question format, it's been super helpful to us. But we got a great question today. It was sort of a multifaceted one um, that we felt like deserved more than just a quick, rapid fire uh, acknowledgement. So we're going to kick it off to Andy and have him read it out loud, and then we'll take it from there. All right, uh, so this one came from, and I apologize because I know I'm going to screw up your last name, uh, Shelly Bergoni, and uh, she works at the Iron Works Grill in Teleco Plains, Tennessee, and uh, she Love sent- that place. I, I will check it out next time down, <laughs> down in Teleco, Tennessee. Beautiful city. Teleco Plains. <laughs> Picturesque, I heard. Um, so, uh, the- the question is, hey, guys, I got my first GM job of a local place in East Tennessee. I was wondering if you had any advice for a newbie. How did you make connections with the other owners? Did you just go and visit other bars, or did you meet in other ways? Thanks so much. That's an awesome question. It just yep. It screened Plymouth. Yeah, it absolutely does. And for those of you that have listened to this podcast um, or any of the other uh, Inebriot podcasts, um, get the idea that a lot of the business owners are, you know, very cooperative with each other down here. It's not, uh, it's not the days of old where everyone was trying to take customers from each other and employees from each other and put each other out of business. It's more of a cooperative agreement that, you know, a rising tide raises all boats. And uh, this is a great one because it just seems to be a change of culture, not just in Plymouth but everywhere, where the restaurant, especially the restaurant and beverage. Um, industries, they seem to be realizing that networking is more important than it used to be. Um, it was something that I know, Dan, you came into town was about three years after Speedwell opened and you to run uh, the BBC, which has been open for, what, 25 years now? I think it's 21. 21, so it's old enough to drink. Yeah. <laughs> but you did the same thing. Yep. You just hit the ground running. Yeah, I mean, it was a big thing to, I was warned we'll call it once, uh, how close-knit Plymouth was. And I'm not from the Plymouth area. I'm from the exact opposite part of Massachusetts. So I don't even know anything besides there's a rock here and we have pilgrims and a parade and stuff. I actually don't even think I knew there's a parade. So, um, But it was important to me just to kind of get out and meet people in the town just to kind of at least get a feel what I was getting myself into. So I know being neighbors to your bar, one of the first things I went in there was to stalk you. Because yeah. I was like, you need to go meet Jordan. You were a pain it, in the ass. Yeah, I mean, it's like, hey, I'm going to drink all your beers and eat all your chicken wings, so uh, be nice to me. But I did the same thing to Carl, and Carl had actually one of the previous general managers of the British Beer Company as his man, bar manager over at New World. So I went over there for a double edge sword, I guess, to get some BBC dirt and some Plymouth dirt from Bobby. Absolutely. Bobby was, was still there when you came Yeah, in Bobby. Town? Wow, that's it, crazy. I got Bobby on the tail end of uh, New World Tavern, so... Yeah. And for you who don't know, Bobby was a local legend in Plymouth bar lore. He, Bobby uh, Clark. His name gets still echoed throughout the uh, rafters, I think. So We should get him on next time he's in town, but he doesn't tell anybody when he's coming to town. He's very elusive. He's smart, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't either. Because there's like a, a, a crowd. He's like the Beatles back in the day. Yeah. He was chase him around in droves. Which is a product of his networking. Yeah, and absolutely. When he was in town, it was he worked at BBC, and that was, at the time... Before a lot of our places opened up, uh, you know, New World and Speedwell, and at the time Driftwood, um, Tav- Driftwood Public House, 
before those places were open, BBC was like the the water cooler of Plymouth, and you know then there was T Bones, there was uh, the Colonial, I think before that, or Sean O'Toole, Sean O'Toole, Riptides, Riptides, so. yep, Riptides. So there were a lot of bars, and the culture was different back then. It was almost like you went. Everyone just kind of went – all the industry people went to BBC and drank. Yep. And everybody knew Bobby because of that. And you see how much that strengthened his – you know, when we got the job over at New World, a bunch of people started going to New World because they knew Bobby. And you see that networking effect. So just even the fact that she has that instinct to be like, I'm a GM. The first thing I got to do isn't like, oh, write new rules for the waitresses or, or write a new menu. It's, no, I got to get to know people in this neighborhood. Get to know your town you're in too. Absolutely. If you're special, I don't know if she's from there or not, but – even right. just, each town's different. So, and I said I've worked in different towns. I know you have. Oh yeah. Uh, nothing works in this, every place. There's no universal code I of agree. success. So I was asked recently by someone. Um, was it fish? No, I, I'm not naming names because okay. this is kind of thing you don't necessarily name it's names cop. about. It's not really offensive. It's more <laughs> top secret. Um, that there is a online way that uh, the local industries communicate. Oh yeah, Plymouth Industry Rant. Oh yes, yeah. my favorite. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't sure like how. So basically, it's a private Facebook page. Yes, that industry insiders have created and, and invite people to. You're not on that. I'm not. I'm surprised. Um, no, I'll invite you. I just found well, no, out, can't out about stop it. Stop talking about him if he's on there. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, but uh, yeah, but basically, you invite people. Uh, but it's a great way to network because there's things like the thing that I was asked about was. I've shown a picture and been like, do you know this guy? What's his story? Yeah. And it was one of those, like, it would be posted, to, you know, have you thrown this guy out? We've had issues with him. What's up with him? Blah, blah, blah. So even when you can network in that way, it's easy to get the buy-in. Oh, it's yes. the best. It's like America's most wanted on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's what it's become. God help you if you oh, piss wait. off more than one Is person. Is that <laughs> why I haven't right. been invited? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, and what's great about that page too, it's just it's sort of um what this podcast you know was started for. It's that um but you know that group you can go to to just kind of air it out, you know, cuz we're all we're in the trenches every day in in the restaurant industry and it's different dealing with the public and you need like-minded people to sort of allow you to Feel a little bit. At least someone's fighting the same fight as me. At least someone else is in the, having the same trouble. Yeah, not as me. everyone's going to understand where you're coming from, and I'm sure there's friends in other industries that don't get what we're saying, and we don't get what they're saying. Absolutely. Like you can make stock market jokes all you want. And let's be honest. I don't have any friends who work in the stock market, but <laughs> nah, I'm not going to get it. I have friends that stock the shelves at supermarkets. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> about as close as I have. <laughs> and they just got off strike, but. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, and that's and it's a great idea instinctually just to go. The best resource you're going to have in any GM job, and the only one I have experience with, is the restaurant industry. But your greatest resource is going to be your people, like-minded people that have experienced things that you know you haven't experienced and are going to experience things maybe you already have that you feel like you could have done better. Going to those people for that resource, seeing what they do, how they deal with certain situations, whether it be human resources, clientele, uh, alcohol, beverage control, uh, you know, all these things – just the town in general, the you know, Plymouth is always something going on, whether it be mm-hmm. construction, a five K, something you know, all the owners seem to get together. Broken water main. Broken water main. <laughs> soon, and gas main coming to a town near you because they're uh, gonna be doing gas work soon. I can't wait. That'll be a nice explosion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's the same company that was digging up uh at what um oh, Lemonster or No where, and oh, was it Andover? Yeah, no, like, like half the town exploded? So they're the same people who screwed up the water mains. Okay. And they're also gonna be the people digging and the people that blew up the gas mains up there in Andover, and they're gonna be the people digging up the gas mains in Plymouth. Oh, so it awesome. sounds like I made a yeah. good choice of uh they, they must town. work for like twelve dollars just twelve bucks if you period. can't tell i'm yeah. very <laughs> nervous <laughs> tatum gave us the heads up i feel like uh, everybody should be nervous what are you going on vacation oh i don't know <laughs> it's gonna be a permanent vacation probably uh down under they don't commit <laughs> you forever <laughs> what's that i said they don't commit you forever <laughs> <laughs> so you get a whole room full of beds i just knowing too and you know we've, i've ranted about this before we're just on that corner me and we're filming. I'm sorry. We're recording at the craft beer cellar once again. I, j- I should give a shout out, craft beer cellar in Plymouth. But uh, us, which we're a, we're sort of across the street from craft beer cellar, uh, Main Street Sports, friend of the show, Chumley was on when he worked there, and uh, craft beer cellar Speedwell. We all seem to be the three, and BBC yep. all seem to be the buildings that lose power, 
lose water and coming to a town near you blow up. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Bermuda Triangle of but come on, problems. you got to spin that into marketing. Fireball, chicken wings, or something. Yeah, I can, I can figure End, that out. You know? End of days, <laughs> buffalo sauce. Yeah, yeah. The We're la- not gonna be able to cook if we don't have the, gas the, la- the, the last meal burger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was trying to think of Game of Thrones theme burgers today. Was, they haven't seen it yet. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no spoilers. One's, no one's Hopefully, seen they see it, it okay. by the time this podcast comes out. If you, if you spoil, spoil Game of Thrones, right. we're spoiling End Game. So this looks like yeah, can't get me. Then I've seen everything <laughs> um, stay off social media today. so you were talking about how you don't have friends in the stock market but you have boatloads of customers and this kind of expands that network even further where i have seen m- this happen at multiple business and, and bars where your customers all are professionals they have an expertise and you network with your customers to the point where your plumbing goes you call that guy that's a plumber and be like hey man you know, I'll hook you up with a couple beers or, you know, set you up with some wings. You know, can you straighten out this toilet or electrical issue? How do you how do you get to that point from just knowing what someone does to that point where you feel like you can be like, hey, man, come hook me up and I'll take care of you? What do you think? Want to take this one down? Yeah, it's definitely like you build up that. It's being a good bar industry person. You kind of build up that camaraderie with, we'll call it a regular if that's who it is or... Because more than like if they're coming into your bar and they do that, they're regulars. Um, oh, yeah. And you really, it's just, you establish that relationship. If you're good at your job, then you can do that. If you're not good at your job, then they're going to turn your power off for you like they do to Jordan. So um, <laughs> it's definitely like, that's, that it's, it's huge, huge part of being good in that, in the bar scene is you want to establish like a repertoire or like, a rapport, that's the right word. Um, uh, they both kind of work. Yeah, word. <laughs> <laughs> a repertoire of regulars. Hey, using good vocab words at 11 in the mornings. <laughs> a rapport with a repertoire uh, of regulars. I, I love bar people where they're like 11 in the morning, and I'm like, I got to sleep in today. <laughs> 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 I just got to work five hours ago. No? <laughs> um, no, but it's huge, and that's another reason to kind of get out there and network. Like, make sure you get those people on your side because they'll help you out in a pinch. I've definitely called or even had someone in the bar i'm like hey man my pipe just cracked down there can you just patch it so i can get someone to come fix it for real and they'll save your day friend of the show hans he's bailed me out a oh, yeah. that's exactly what i was wind. thinking of yeah i mean even before he was a second wind guy he was a plumber absolutely and i know he's helped tatum out and he's yeah. helped us out yep same yeah. speedwell definitely he's in for you know him and the guys from the plumbing company he was working for were in every friday for lunch and He'd be sitting there, and you know he was just trying to enjoy his lunch. I'd be like, yo, Hans, you got a second to come take a look at something? <laughs> the greatest way to go at that, too, though, um, is you don't want to go into when – you're, when you're building a business relationship with your clientele outside of just the buying chicken wings or a beer from you. You don't want to go into it where you're looking for a handout. You want to be like, no, I want to support you because you support me. And then if you guys come into an exchange of goods as a – way of compensating each other then that's fine but going to it like you're going to pay that person just as much as you would pay a plumber you got from the yellow pages because you're in reality you're just supporting someone that's supporting you right i always find that that little which is always a nice perk to just be able to exchange goods that comes along naturally later on or it doesn't and but you just still feel good about supporting someone that's supporting i mean even you. if you are even if you're paying let's use hans because we know hans you know he's in in your bar and you're like, hey man, I need this water pipe thing fixed. I'm not a plumber, so I don't know. The water pipe thing. Put water pipe uh, thing. He's, deal- he's seen a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, One or two in his day. And, and you pay him whatever amount he charges. You got to figure a fair amount of that's coming back to you. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So not like, to mention he's keeping you in business. Right. You know, it's, oh yeah, and, and beyond right. that, you know, right. you're not having to shut down. Well, then you because yeah. your run. water main break. Thing doesn't right. work. You want to have Hans on the water, man. Right? <laughs> you imagine? We would have had extra water yeah. that day. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> but yeah, you definitely, even like just the prospect of that's your your go to person for other jobs now. Like right. you're giving them more business in that sense. So it can definitely be like a good, like symbiotic relationship. Do you there. find yourself, when you when you find these people, because I mean, you're not, you're never regular the first time in. Mm-hmm. So at some point, you become a regular and you start to have that conversation about like, Oh, what is it that you do? You know, making small talk or whatever. 
do you find it like when someone's like, oh, I'm a refrigerator repair technician that you're like, oh, really? And yeah. then you kind of like, <laughs> every time he's in, you make sure you'd be like, hey, man, how's it going? Right, right. Yeah, do, a little, do, go a little extra. Yeah, go a little. On the good side. Yeah, just to be like, a, you know. And, well, I'll be honest. It can get complicated, too. And there's two sides to this because you don't want to um, have an issue with. You like that person as a a client. You even like them as a person just to sit at your bar and have a conversation with. You don't know how good of a plumber they are. You don't know how good of a refrigerator repair person. You don't know how they are as a business person. Yeah. So then you run the risk of, great, I can build a relationship, you know, with somebody that, you know, I quote unquote trust that I have already, you know, a casual relationship with. You get them to fix your fridge. They keep fucking it up. Now you're like, what do I do? Do I... You know, do, do I get on this person? Because if it was somebody I didn't know through a hole in a wall, I'd be like, yo, come back and fix this fucking fridge. Right. And I ain't paying for it. You were supposed to fix it right the first time. Now you got this conflicted relationship with someone that's spending money in your bar. So you got a fridge that hasn't been working right after four attempts of fixing it. You're running the risk of losing a good customer because right. that relationship's now fragile. And, and then you have to call someone else in, and they're going to be like, well, wh- I would have done that for you, man. Right. And then, you know, maybe you get past that, but then you're like, well, next time I'm not going to ask him. And then he's sitting there at the bar, and he sees the other refrigeration company as competition yeah. walk in and fix something. He's like, what's that about? And, you know, that's – so you run the risk there. I've done that, too, with hiring uh, my clientele. That gets a little sketchy, too, where yeah. – you know, you get to know them, you like them, you like them sitting at your bar, they're good people, and then you throw them in your kitchen or you throw them at... And you're, you're like, he's here all the time, he's a great guy. Yeah. Then you get behind <laughs> the bar and you're like, oh, he's drunk all the time. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> they're doing the same thing, just on this side yeah. of the bar. Exactly, <laughs> and you got to be careful there too, because you don't want to cannibalize your clientele. You don't want to... you got to really think long and hard before you get someone in your circle, and vice versa too, like... I know there's a lot of people that would have been great fits at Speedwell for employees. That's an easy one to look at because you got to know them and, you know, they, they felt like part of the crew already. And then, you know, you think about it and, you like, you know, there's been a couple of people I pulled aside. Hey, man, why don't you come work for me? I'm like, well, this is really the place I like to drink and have fun. If once it becomes a job, then I lose that. And, right, right. You know, and that's the same thing with a contractor or a repair person. You got to be careful there. It's it's, and, and going back to the original theme of this, an, another restaurant owner, too. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we're still competition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's got to be a little bit of an arm's length there. We all trust each other. We work together. But you don't want to overreach. You don't want to depend too hard on a neighboring business. You got to be sort of careful. Use each other for advice. Don't steal employees from each other. If someone's doing that, to, you know, don't open up that door where it's like, all right, this re- my restaurant can't survive without the help of another restaurant, or I can't be a good GM without running to the guy I'm competing with across the street and asking him every single time something comes up. Use it, you know, make your build your relationships, but also you know you got to keep a little bit of an arm. Try to line. keep it mutually beneficial. Too. Mutually beneficial, it's, yeah. So you, so you want to help out as much as exactly. you're getting help, right? You want to be just as useful. You, you don't want to be the guy who's always coming over. Borrowing on and, Saturday and, afternoon, being like, "Hey Jordan, I need singles. Did you got any singles?" And you're yeah. like, "No, Carl, I don't." <laughs> <laughs> Stop going to the strip Speaking club of, every day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Keg again is here. Now nah, you let me borrow Jameson last week. We're even, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's another thing to be careful with too. And don't you know you want to put yourself out there. You want to get out. So, so she had said, you know, do I want to just go to these bars and become a regular? Like you do, but you also have an image to uphold that. You're the GM of this place, a new GM that no one knows. So if they just see you in other people's bars drinking all the time, they're going to be like, is that all she does? Like, right. you know, and they're going to be a little bit standoffish about inviting see, you into their circle because they don't know what kind of person you are. Oh, well, I think that all goes now how you carry yourself because the only reason right. I met anyone in this town is by either at work or going to other people's places. So like you said, I did the same thing to you. I went to the other bar. Like, just at least introduce yourself and go in for lunch. Don't go in just to get hammered. Like, right. that's not the way to make your first impressions. Like, oh, this guy's wasted, and then he's gonna come ask me questions. Like, right. You're not gonna get taken seriously. So maybe go in for lunch, like when it's not busy, and then you can introduce yourself and talk to someone because you should get yourself out there, and it's good to be seen because then if the more you're seen, people come to see you. I right. think. It, so. And it's one of those like such a it's such a weird life to have where uh 
it was a couple weeks ago. I'm not naming a date because I don't want to get anyone in trouble where I'm <laughs> sitting at Mayflower and I get a tap on the shoulder and it's Jordan. I'm like, hey, man, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And I was talking to Carl. And I'm like, I ran into Jordan over Mayflower. And he's like, oh, really? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, he told me he was at Second Wind. <laughs> and so, like, he pulls out his, his phone and he starts like, he's like, what time did you see Jordan? I'm, and so, like, I'm like, yeah, that oh, makes it was sense. He Saturday. Grabbed, yeah. And we yep. grabbed a beer at Second Wind. Then he went to Mayflower. But that's also one of those, like, me and Fish will be like, you know, we'll finish re- recording a podcast or, or whatever, and you'll be like, all right, where do you want to go? We're like, well, we were at Speedwell the other night, and we were at New World the night before. You actually end up being, like, trying to spread, spread the, the love, love around mm-hmm. evenly. Being oh, like, 100%. Oh, well, we haven't been here in a long time, so we have to go, like, stop in and, and, and check in with this person and see what's going on. And then on the flip side, I recently had a, it wasn't a serious relationship, but a relationship end because she did not understand that that is really part of the business. Right. You know, and she's like, it's just an excuse for you to go and, and drink with your friends. And I'm like, it's literally networking. Yeah. You know, you go here, you have a beer, you go here, they have a beer, and you catch up with people, you stay in, in, in their mind, you know? Right. Cause, Super important. Yeah. Yep. And not to mention, you're you're keeping that bug in their ear that you're a supporter of their business. So when they have a need that you could provide, mm-hmm. you're going to be the exactly you're going right. to be the fir- you're the familiar face. You're going to be the first person they think of. Or or if you call them with needing a favor, they're like, he's in here all the time. Of course. Yeah. Yep. Right. And they want to support you, and right. and that's a great thing to do. Honestly, the backbone I think to a GM job is is having that support system around you so that instinct like i said right off the rip to build that networking group with the strongest people from every place that's the way to go and then after that you know even if it's your first gm job and you don't quite know how to manage a restaurant or you do you have like a bare bones idea those little in between things those people that you surround yourself with and are supporting are going to be ready to support you and help you fill those gaps as you start to build your own style of managing and and etc. So well, that's a good support group to have too, because where I think something could be like the end of the worlds, and then I'm like, I got to call like out of some professional person can do it. I'm like, Jordan, can you look at this? And I know you've helped me with the dishwasher problem, right? Like, oh, this just happened to me yesterday. Just <laughs> that plug was this blocking. hose back in. And I stuff. looked like a goddamn rock star. But that's it. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's like, it's just, yeah, Jordan's like, did you shut it off and turn it back on again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reset the modem. Yeah, wait 30 seconds. No, but like, it's it can save you a lot of money in that sense. Just having a fresh set of eyes of someone that does the same thing, like because they're not in the weeds, they're not stressed out, right? Yeah, you know? it's yeah. just even like they've dealt with the issue before. Like, there's plenty of stuff from like. We've worked in every keg system before too, so you could call up and like, "Hey, what's mm-hmm. this?" I'm like, "Oh, it's a stupid fix. This little screw, and you're good to go." Yep. And we've all done it. Like the same thing. Like your ice machine broke. I'm like, "Oh, mine just did that." Yep. Last month. And like when this I, is what it is. When I first got Aloha, uh, we switched POS systems, and it was what you used over at BBC. Yep. And I was freaking. I was so screwed for about a week, and I was just constantly like, "What's this look like? What's that?" And you knew because you've worked on that POS system. Yeah, so, it's, so it's all that stuff. So it's good to have that support network because, one, it can save you a lot of time and money, but also, too, it's you're not ready to rip your hair out right away because someone else can have that easy answer for you instead of the, the long, difficult road. Mm-hmm. And then if it's just for venting, commiserate, yeah, yeah. commiserating. Like, there's so much that goes into that. Me- like, this, this industry can be so taxing and just sometimes just really lonely. And uh, when you have other people that are dealing with the same crap every day and you can just, you know, you could just go, hey, man, let's go for a beer real quick and and just air it out. It feels so much better to just know that someone else has the same problems because they all do. We all do. Yep. Same problem. There's no one restaurant that's dealing with one problem. And none of them. None of the other ones are. They're all dealing with them in the entire planet at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have a standing policy on this podcast where if you have something bad to say you leave the name out. Right. If you have something positive, you're welcome to, to name names and, and places and whatnot. Do you feel that's a good policy as far as networking? Because you don't want to be the guy that's always bitching about people or calling people out. Is that something you guys think about when you're talking with other people? Oh, yeah. And and early on, um, I will say, when I was real green, first came into town, it wasn't my first managing job, but it was the first time I was like the owner of a place, too. So... You know, you get a little, especially when alcohol is involved, you know, you, you get your few people that you feel like, you know, you can trust and you can air it out, but you never know who else is listening. Right. You got to be careful with that. Um, it would, I would definitely always, not just in business, but always follow the rule. If you got nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Because if, if, 
if it's not your problem, if it's not someone that's harming you directly, it's none of your business anyway. And and um, honestly, if you know, unless it's a business advice, like say if let's go back to refrigerator regular that sucked at fixing things, mm-hmm. and you know I'm out having a beer with Dan, and Dan's like, I need a good refrigerator guy. I'll be like. Well, don't hire this guy because Dan's my friend. Right. And I want to give him the heads up. Keep it between us, but don't hire this guy if it's something like that. But outside of that, you know, anything that's not really our business, the whole gossip thing. I, you don't want to be known as the town gossip. Yeah, yeah. don't it's, be that. It's and not a good look to have. It's so easy to do it, and it's so fun to talk about because you want to know that other people are having problems too, like I was saying before. But you got to be. It's always going to get back to the person. Yep. Well, you just never know who's friends with who. Right. Well, that's it. Be, right. be aware of your surroundings. I mean, God forbid if the Speedwell basement walls could talk, the, the Monday rants that we've both had down there right. would probably sink ships. But <laughs> and, uh, Right. And that's because we're more than acquaintances now. Like, Dan's a friend of mine, so yeah. I know I can talk to him about certain things. And, he and you learn that through the course of time. Exactly. Right, yeah, actually. Yeah. But when you're just straight up networking, don't complain at all. Even if it's your own problems, don't complain. Just yep. stay as positive as possible because – no one wants to get into a conversation with somebody and just hear about their problems, <laughs> let alone like someone that you're just getting to know. Like, and then when you they start, like you said, start talking about other people's problems um, or the problems they have with other people, then you're just wow, that's just super dramatic. Every time I come in contact with that person, I'm going to get myself into trouble just yeah, by yeah, being yeah, associated yeah. with yep, that yep. person because then it's now oh, I saw Jordan talking with so and so. And that so and so was talking about this and this person. And then now, now I'm roped in with that, even though I didn't say anything. I was in that conversation. So, yeah, you got to be. That's I mean, that's just social skill one on one. You, yep. you know, and especially with networking, you just be pissing rainbows all the time. Just everyone's great, you know, and keep the ones that aren't great. Those conversations about those people or things that aren't great behind closed doors and and as private as possible. I mean, one of the great responses I, I've had recently. I was talking with uh, a a bar owner about someone that no longer works there. And I'm like, did they go or did you let them go? And they're like, we parted ways. And I'm mm-hmm. like, fair enough. I, I, I know when to stop asking questions. <laughs> you know, and it's like that. that's, you know, that's part of business. And it, it's, I really respect when it's, it's, I mean, this is a comic book store that I'm thinking of now where the former employee was trashing the place to the point where it went viral online and the comic book shop was just completely silent. Yeah. Because yeah. they're like, we're not getting involved. That's your drama. We're not going to skirt legal, you know, po- you, know, you start trashing someone back and then they can, you know, go after you for whatever. It, it's a very tricky when you're a business owner and just take the high road. You, you have know? to. And it hurts, man. Especially yep. when you're, and you know, I, I'm going to relate to this super like, because this is very fresh in my head. I just had to let somebody go that was like the face of my place oh, since shit. we opened, and um, very relevant. But uh, <laughs> that was not on purpose, Jordan. I apologize. <laughs> no, it's okay. But um, no, that's very relevant because Do you that, want a hug, Dan? Give him a hug. That's <laughs> no, no, no. That's Which sort of how it happened, thing. though. That's <laughs> it played out that way. The, the, you just nailed it on the head. Where the person was obviously angry. You know, I made the decision. The person was angry, which is understandable. Yeah, I mean, and, and 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 again. I, the, I, the way I always present it was we parted ways. You know, the person was we knew was going to leave anyway. You know, we had kind of outgrown each other. You know, definitely the person outgrew us. Uh, I would say, you know, and could have been happier somewhere else at that point. And you know, we were in a transition phase, and she just couldn't put on the happy face during that transition phase. So I had to make the move, and it sucked. But went right to social media, trashed me, trashed my business, kind of let everybody do the same thing um and i just had to sit there and take it but at the end of the day if you almost respond to that if you try to defend yourself then you are stooping down to that level and you're almost admitting guilt see that's and that's one of those uh this is my best effort to change the subject because i didn't mean to bring that up um (laughs) but uh i i've seen that time and time again where businesses will you know someone will post anything negative and businesses will respond. And it perfect example um, is uh, Sagmore Beach Barbecue. I was just thinking of yep. that. You know, that's the it, first thing I thought of actually. And it's like they got trashed. They responded, and it just annihilated them. And right. it was really unfortunate. At some point, I, I tell people, I'm like, don't, don't. Re-. The only response you should have to anything negative is, "We're sorry that you're experiencing something negative." 
please contact us. Right. And you do it on the phone. You don't text them. You don't email them. The problem with the Sagamore thing. That just went completely out of here. The hand. screenshots. Yep. yep. That's what I'm saying. And, and, you, and those could have been yeah. altered, too. They, and, they could have been altered. They, they have could been, have been deleted. But, they could have been out of context. You just right. don't know. Right. And, um, but, but in today's world, everyone's looking for the next thing to be outraged right. about. And everyone has an opinion about something. And and I, I posted a rant on Facebook about this the other day, too. I, I mean, Facebook or any social media platform is like the fast food for opinions. Yeah. You're not going to get anything with substance of value. It's not something you should be consuming every day. Um, and then you just get people that want to sink ships. Like right. that combo oh, yeah. shop, um, they were getting people leaving Yelp reviews, being like, I shop here all the time, and this place is a piece of shit, blah, blah. Right. And the place was up in uh, Salem, Mass., and this person was from, like, San Antonio, Texas. And everyone's like, you, you don't shop there all the time. You clearly don't even live there. Right. So it's just, once you get online, people just want to trash you, and God forbid it goes viral about something negative. Right. It can sink your business. Yeah, you I know? guess the point is, if you're an objective person going online to research a restaurant or vice versa, take it with a grain of salt. If you're a restaurant owner or a, man, or a GM Never. and you're getting trashed, don't respond. Don't respond. Again, you best be like... Sorry you had that problem. Please contact us. We'll try to sort it out. Right. You know and who probably has a great is like those really old people that own like the mom and pop restaurants that don't have computers or websites. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's like they have lists. Yeah. Fucking Man. no idea what's right. going on. Like they be, they probably have one of those like turnstile phones and right. like they don't even know how to answer it. But you know what's great is because they're, then they're prioritizing the people they're making face with exactly. every single day. Yep. And that's what everyone should do. I, it, Facebook and, and Twitter and Instagram is great to reach a bunch of people at the same time but that message is diluted and it goes both ways it's a double edged sword yeah, yeah it's very impersonal it's it's diluted it's it's the cheap way to kind of reach a bunch of people you know to scream down the hallway and have everybody here a little bit but the people that you're making face with every single day vice versa those are the people that are supporting you those are the people you should support don't get hung up on the Facebook reviews and don't or Yelp reviews don't respond just don't respond yeah. or if you do like Andy said which was perfect where where we apologize you had a negative experience, please contact us and we'll do what we can to make it right. And you do that privately. And if yeah. they don't contact you, you know what their motives were and you don't lose any sleep right. over it. And it, if they do... And then if it goes viral, that's always out there that you at least made that overture to try and correct something. Right. And then it's a mystery of what happened behind right. the curtain. Yeah, yep. exactly. And that's fine. That's what you want. You yep. don't want to be on stage having a private conversation. And most times, and in my experience, where you know I've had the opportunity to be able to right or wrong privately... Most times, the person will go back and delete that. Even if they're not completely happy with the outcome, they're happy you just took the time to listen to their issue and try to resolve it. And then that's enough for them, you know? Yeah. So to try and roll this back into networking, because that's what we're talking about. <laughs> so uh, easy, right? <laughs> yeah. It's so easy to get off on rants. Yeah. Uh, the, you mentioned like the old school mom and pop place and how networking is more of a recent thing. Have you guys ever experienced like that old school place that it's just like this is my place that's your place not interested in being your friend i'm not interested in oh every market i've ever worked in besides plymouth has been like that like where it's like fuck that guy fuck this guy it's all about that you don't have it i'm gonna steal your customers like this is a very culture shock to me coming into this town and it being like we're all friends i was like wait what they're like all right Right. and said you can either roll with it or not um i chose the path of less resistance least resistance because it's better that way, I think, than mm-hmm. what they have in this town where it's everyone works together. It's a community. Then, But you just, to you just changed locations. Are you trying to build that Plymouth model where you are now? Good question. Um, Represent. Yes, yes and no. Because <laughs> <laughs> being in Boston, one, I'm not, well, I'm not the main face of that place, yeah. so it's not really – my place to do it like i'll go like i've met people from around surrounding area and stuff like that but where i'm also driving far enough away i'm not out at every bar and i i'm there most nights too right. so no one wants to see me at three o'clock in the morning because i don't want to see him at three o'clock in the morning right. um so it's a little different for me there but i do know that the people that have been there for a while they are big in the community so it's more of a gradual build up for me there than it was here Mainly because I'm not the main person in charge, so mm-hmm. I don't have to try to make sure everyone knows that because that those relationships are already established by the uh, previous structure or the structure that's already there in place for me. So are they are they friendly with the other places around? Or I mean, w- w- did from, you walk into a situation where it was like that? Or? Yeah, it's not. It's it's 
It's probably somewhere in the middle. Okay. Where I don't think like I haven't seen anyone be like, let's steal this and let's do that. But it's also not the same where I think you see everyone meeting together and that's Right. But like I said, I'm not there during the daytime, so that's usually where a lot of those meetings of the minds go on, so not being down there where it's different where I live down here. Right. Um so it could be. So it's that's still uh I'll I'll get back to you on that. I don't okay. know yet. Yeah, 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 I look forward to the update. <laughs> like I've met I've met a couple people from there and everyone that's been I've met from those other locations has been great. But it's awesome. Like I said, I haven't really gotten into that area yet. I think the summer co- quiets down a little mm-hmm. more over there, so maybe that'll be the time to do it, but a little mingling time. Yeah. But right now it's kinda go to work, go home. You know what I think kind of presses or forces that sort of um no matter even if there's some resistance um is the staff of a restaurant because they don't want to drink at the place they work but they get out of work and they want to go out and get something or sometimes before work (laughs) guilty but um they go to the places that are near the place they work you know they want to see what other people are doing not to scope out the competition quote unquote sometimes maybe but just because they they want to know what it's like on the other side of the fence and and part and enjoy that place and I think that's when the sort of relationships start to naturally happen is you become friendly with you know a bartender becomes friendly with the bartender at the other place because they're sitting at each other's bars and and naturally the owners where back in the day when I was in this when I first started cutting my teeth in the restaurant industry owners would be like I don't want to see you at it his bar i don't you know they would restrict their employees from going to other competing places where now it's like you know you can't really do that word's gonna get around town that you're telling your employees you can't go to other places that's not your right to tell them they can't so you just kind of got to play along and then eventually i think even the most old school owner that might resist that sort of incestuous relationship starts to come around a little bit like listen there's nothing i can do about it and there's nothing that can come bad from you know? I mean, it's literally someone doing recon for you. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Well, oh, you went there? What was good? Like, what right. You know, what they have on the menu that was good? What did see, people seem to be liking about it? What did people seem to not like about right. it? Right. Yep. And I almost and I like to go to the place because I don't want to do what they're doing. I yeah. want to offer something that I, I assume if they're offering it, they're really good at it. Yeah. Why am I going to offer the same thing and, and then be the person that does a less good job at it? You know yeah, what I mean? You're right. playing catch up to try to get on yeah, their Like, I'm not going to just stop putting, you know, you don't carnitas be DC on the menu. when Endgame's ever. coming out. Have you seen Endgame, Dan? I have. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> what about that Battle of Winterfell, though? <laughs> We're not going to talk about that either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna watch it again today, but we're not gonna talk about that either. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's. Today. I think that's a big part of it too. I think the um, employee management, employee owner relationship has become a lot more family like than it was in the past. Where in like corporate restaurants, it's yep. super. You know, everyone's a number kind of thing. Yeah. I've never worked corporate, but I feel like that's how it is. Yeah, no, I have. I've worked. To I many, feel like it's okay to corporate. steal staff from corporate too. I do. Oh, there's no. <laughs> I, I yeah. just did. Because you know they're not happy. Well, the I same thing is really, they'll, really good they'll do it to you. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they definitely will. Um, but you don't see people making that jump too often. The other way. But, yeah, it's it's different having, like, a, a faceless person that you work for than someone that you see all the time. Right. You, have, you can actually name. Or if you have their phone number, which is terrible that you don't want people to have your phone number. But. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely a different thing. Yeah. I think that's why it's not even worth fighting it. Like the natural, the GM to GM or GM to ownership uh, networking is awesome, but your staff's already kind of going to be doing it, you know? And, yeah. And unless you are one of those GMs or owners that's like, you're not allowed to go over there. And if you are, I feel bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I see more now is places, and it's more like on the corporate structure, but they're like, you can't drink at our bar. Yeah. So now they're forcing them to go somewhere else. Yeah. Which I, I get a little bit. Yeah. Because you don't want. Because, I mean, we've all been in a bar where you see the person at work that is really drunk or being an asshole. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but at the same time, like. Yeah, but Jordan owns see, the place. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, I mean, that's what we that's said. We don't name names. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> the guy that works at Speedwell that owns oh. the place. <laughs> we had a deal, Cal. <laughs> but I do think it's a fun, a, a cool thing to show your customers that your staff wants to be at your own place. Like, right. I make them change out of their uniform. Yes, and I think so, that's a good policy. It, it, right. It's a very catch-22 because I've seen both sides of it. Um, I've – surprise, surprise, I know a lot of bartenders. Um, you do? A, a few. And I've been at places that have made that transition to where they're like, you're not allowed to drink at the bar anymore. 
and they'll get off of work and I'm like, oh, you're leaving? And like, yeah. I'm like, you want to go get a beer? So then not only do they go get a beer somewhere else, so do I. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? Right, because so, you want to spend time with that person. With my friend, yeah. Right. At Tens Bar. And, and I it even got back to the like the point where the GMs were like, you're taking business with you. And the person's like, it's not my fault. Right. You know? It's your fault. They're, <laughs> they're telling me they're leaving to go drink at the next corporate place two doors down. Right. You know, and it's just it, it, it's a it's a it's a hard line to walk, but uh, it's tricky. It is. You gotta. It's another thing you have to manage. And yeah. I, 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 for me personally, it was like, hey, just don't wear your speedwell shirt after your shift while you're drinking at the bar because the people you're close to and having conversations with, it looks fine. They, they're talking to you. They know you're coherent. Do you have a relationship? But from across the bar, someone that maybe came to speedwell for the first time sees you leave the bar, go to the other side of the bar, and slam two beers or a couple martinis or something like that. They don't know what you're saying. They don't know what you're right. doing. And they see you, they just say, that person's in uniform. Probably they're drinking could, on the job. Could, what, yeah. could be exactly. drinking yeah. You don't know the if they're working or just not. Just flip <laughs> the shirt inside out and blah, 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 blah. And yep. then don't get messed up. Yeah, don't get fucked up. Don't get fucked up. And if you do, like if you see yourself getting that way, then go to the other bar. Like, right. Please, like, <laughs> end, <laughs> is, end <laughs> somewhere else. And you then sneak out that back door and then right. you take your tab later. And you've had it before where you do get close knit with some owners and managers in town and one of your employees gets too screwed up at their bar and you got to answer for them there. And that's So is that part of the networking? Do, do people actually like bitch at you when someone from that works for you gets over overserved at someone else? Cuz I mean so at, I, at the same you had to deal with I had to deal with this. <laughs> but I mean at the same aspect where it's not your responsibility not your you don't have a right to tell people where and when, where they can't drink. Right. Here's, in the same retrospect, if someone gets fucked up in someone else's bar, that's not your responsibility. Right. Dan's got a good. Yeah. I know you do. Yes. I had to deal with this like, last year. Yeah. Um, where I had an employee that he was, he liked to drink a lot. And at one point, I even told him he, this is one of the, I, I grounded him from drinking at the bar. He put him in timeout. Uh, like oh, he, was it like a, a, a legit, like I thing, had or? enough issues with him being a mess at our bar and it's a small bar over there at the British Beer Company that you don't want, people know you are there. The, the food is <laughs> great, great snack selection. Uh, did not get enough substance for this gentleman. So I told him you can't come in for two months. You can come to work and that's it. You're not drinking here. That's it. So then, unfortunately, now he's going to Speedwell. Speedwell. <laughs> and then I come to find out that he did something. He, I don't want to get too specific because. Yeah, we don't have to get He did specific. something where, like. He crossed the line. He embarrassed me to the uh. point that I got. Not, like, so much, like, because I, I was his boss, but, like, the way he acted like, as a human. <laughs> I was like, dude. And you feel responsible and for And because it. it's that's the way this town is. Like, right. everyone knows where you work there. And that, and I had to have a talk with him. Like, listen, man. You, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life outside of work. Mm-hmm. But just know you represent our business. And where I have people telling me these stories, like, you're letting us all down. Like, and you kind of go on that parent guilt trip. That, that that's is, a great way to lay it yeah. out, though, man. If someone had a conversation, like, if I did something like that and someone said that to me, I'm like, wow. I'm Jordan would probably cry. I would have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I honestly would have. Like, Ooh, when someone sorry. tells me I let them down, <laughs> like, I forgot to change the diaper genie last night and I got yelled at by my wife this morning. She basically said I let her down. And I am never going to forget to change that diaper genie ever again. Yep. That's a great way to put it where you're not overstepping as a manager. You're just saying, hey, listen, you know, it, when you leave this place, you're not. You're you're one of the faces of this restaurant of this of this bar. You got to be, still behave accordingly. I know essentially I can't control what you do when you're punched out. It's really tough because you are kind of like a figurehead. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, that's the in this particular person like the name dropper. He worked all the time, so yeah, it was kind of even true. worse. Oh, in that that's sense. Yeah. Like it just yeah. Wasn't like oh we don't know who this person like oh, I work here and I'm gonna absolutely be an asshole. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm that, fucked up, and this is my job. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's tough because one, two, then you have like the staff that we all are friends with. We all work together, and it's literally what next this person door. did. Yes, and if I, you I'm were on, if you were on, you could probably heard it through the wall. Exactly. <laughs> say, if I worked that night, I would have walked over there and probably slapped him in the face. Yeah, um, I'm sh- surprised your bartender didn't do the same thing. Uh, she was very, very close. close. I think she was so shocked. This sucks now because people listening to this are going to be like, what did he do? <laughs> Can we say what he yeah, did this, without saying who it is? This particular person has fake teeth. Like, I don't know how he got fake teeth, but he's like top – most of his top row of teeth aren't real. 
he was really drunk and decided it'd be funny to put his teeth in uh, a glass. That was she was cleaning up the bar and had a yeah. bunch of dirty glasses on the bar. And, like this person had been cut off for the night. Yeah, like, he, so he was done. She gave him a water and to be an asshole, like to silently protest the water he was given, put his fake teeth in. So then, not paying attention, she threw his fake teeth away. <laughs> <laughs> so now this person's really drunk and embarrassed that he has no teeth, and it's like on the verge of tears trying to communicate that he has no teeth yes they threw away so then uh jordan's bartender had to go into the sink to, to pick oh. luckily she threw, oh. she threw the teeth in the sink and it had a strain or something strain strain yeah, yeah, it wasn't like yeah, we did that at my still. job but it's right in the fucking trash barrel and you have right. no teeth anymore um wow that's but then a fucked she, up story. Yeah. Yeah. So then that's the next, why i'm like we have to tell the story yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then the next i don't i feel funny. bad but well, we yeah, but didn't we didn't name do it. Involved, Consider- so. we, we didn't name names, you know and what? we didn't do it. For those of you that are from Plymouth that are connecting the dots right now, consider this his penance, but please, let's just give him a break. <laughs> oh, no, don't worry. Price, he, so. I told everybody the story that right. so, <laughs> this story isn't that. He's told well, the story, no, yeah, too. He does, too, so... That's part of the shame to keep you not from yeah. doing that again. Maybe, but... maybe we'll invite him on the next episode about blackout drunk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's probably or not. Way, yeah. <laughs> I was say, we'd have to do another morning one. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so just remember, yeah. we all know, we all talk. Yeah, you know, even if you're in the part of the uh, friendship group, you're, you're you, still you end up on the industry page the yeah. on Facebook. I haven't had an employee from my place really disrupt another place where to the point a manager or an owner came to me and was like yo can you tell this person to chill I don't think but I've had other I've had it the other way around where like an employee from another place was coming in obviously yeah, yeah. that story we you just told you about one another, another, <laughs> well, another, well, another a, couple that's, where that's a I mean that's a really this part of networking whatever but like did you go to Dan and be like, you got to talk to this guy? No, I didn't know anything. Actually, I think Maggie did not. I talk, eat, yeah. It Maggie. was the next song. Oh, like, you now give a name. Yeah, oh, no, well, my bar, to my yeah. bar manager. My bar manager. Uh, Maggie was the unfortunate. It, it actually yeah. was a Monday, so I always used to go talk to Jordan and Maggie every Monday morning, part of like our office work. And uh, she told me a story, and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And I sent this giant lung, said my disappointed parent text message on the spot. I'm like... I'd be so mad if I, I'm mad for yeah. you right now, and I can only imagine how mad right. you were. So, if a customer did that, we'd all it'd be on the Plymouth Rand industry. Right, right, yeah. like, we've been talking about yeah. it for weeks. Yeah. If you, <laughs> you, if you mean, were a random person, that you probably wouldn't be coming into the bar anymore. Right? Like, Jimmy so. Agnew would be making uh, oh, uh, yeah. memes about oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Teeth on the inside of the circle. <laughs> 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 so, they're, they're lucky. You're not above oh, the rules. I'd love to get Jimmy back on. <laughs> Jimmy was the original. Uh, was the original one of the original guests of the first episode. Jimmy and uh, he Matt door, Hennessy from Driftwood. <laughs> he is next door, actually. Yeah. Um, He's uh, upholding the uh, chalkboard game I know. in town. Someone had to take up my I gotta torch. Get back in it. Yeah, I got to get do, back in I'll it. do one for you. Yeah, I'm maybe getting, I'll just do that. I'm getting chalkboard uh, envy now. See, networking. Yeah. <laughs> it works, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I'm, we've really rambled on. on the, and that, that's the thing about networking or just you know, in general is – there are so many different things, and you could see how easily it was for us, you know, to just jump into stories and different things where we've we've sort of crossed paths and we've used each other for help, or we've mutually dealt with an employee or a, or a customer and had issues. And you know, had you just kind of been a standalone restaurant, it's I I think it would be a little bit more difficult to deal with a lot of this stuff on your own where I get essentially you're opening up the door to drama yep. when you're, when you're inviting more people in, but it's it. So I had a story that's kind of more, I have a buddy who worked with me up in Framingham and he mm-hmm. now lives in Virginia and he works at a bar down there. He has FaceTime me to figure out how to fix a keg from Virginia. And it's just, you established. So it's a great thing to establish that support group and the network to that. Like, because if he didn't do that, he would have been fucked because he didn't know anyone in Virginia to do it so at least well and that's the perfect thing like if you are you know plymouth has i think we were counting one time and i think we got up to 40 restaurants and places and to eat on water main and court street they're all good yeah, yeah, yeah oh yeah they're like all good the competition <laughs> around here is crazy but it's easy to network around here mm-hmm. exactly even if you hate half the people that's still yeah, 20 you still, people yeah, you can you do still get, you can have at least 10 people in this so, town that you like and i don't and know what te- i don't know what tennessee's like she may be the only restaurant within 40 miles. Right. So the internet is perfect there because there's uh, even outside of localized industry support groups, there are other um, bartender restaurant owner groups. There's the Bar Talk podcast that you can message and we would be perfectly yeah, happy to, we, we we'll help you to help. out. So, um, yeah. 
you know, we we monitor that pretty closely. Excuse me. So if there's a, a pressing matter, I mean, you know, he can always give us a shot, and maybe we can sort it out. We can have you FaceTime Dan and. Yeah, hopefully he's got pants on. Snarls Barkley, if you need some emotional yeah. support, Snarls Barkley's Instagram is uh, at Snarls Barkley the Frenchie, the cutest goddamn dog ever. Yeah, yep. it's pretty adorable dog. Yeah. Yeah. I know she got her Celtics jersey on yesterday. Yeah, saw that. For the game. That's why yep. we won. Yep. Set, say that, we. I'm part uh, of the team. That you, jersey's three and zero right now. Can you mm-hmm. get her a Bruins jersey, please? I I would, but by the time it gets here. They might uh, be in the Amazon, like two I days. I've shipping. looked. I've looked. <laughs> we start a GoFundMe for Beach for all all sports jerseys for uh, Snells yeah. Barkley. Can I just say, since uh, and you know, because I got to make it about me now, because we compete with our babies. Yep. Since uh, my son's been born, the Patriots and the Red Sox have both won championships in his first full year of life, and now the Bruins and the Celtics are both. He could sweep. Um, you know what? If Joel gets us the Boston Grand Slam, I, we're having a, something for, special for him. A kegger. Yeah. Well, <laughs> just, just for us. Since we're, <laughs> since, since we're competing about babies, uh, my son is driving now. How about Fish, yours? you just learned how to drive? Uh, son. <laughs> I'm not I barely acknowledge I know him. <laughs> <laughs> you even got fish to laugh on. <laughs> just because I date his mom doesn't, doesn't mean we're <laughs> Oh, you do realize he edits. Yeah. <laughs> he's you sound. He's gonna give you helium. <laughs> oh, if he hasn't done that already, <laughs> right? Oh my god. Um, well, so, well, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I took him for the first time the other day. He did excellent. Even though his first thing, I said, because uh, my car is like a start button. I'm like, put your foot on the brake and press the button. He goes, which one's the brake? <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, it's going to be a long day. But he did great. And so. why do you have to blow into that thing to get the car? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I've always had him blow into that even when I'm driving. <laughs> it's like, don't tell your mother. <laughs> oh. uh, so, yeah, I mean, the reason why I, I was so psyched about this question is that I, I felt not only is it a great question, but I felt like being in this Plymouth area we could really answer it. So, uh, Shelly, that was a phenomenal question. Thank keep, you, Shelly. Keep, thanks for listening, and uh, keep them coming. And um, so that's last call. Last call. Already. Holy crap. I guess I'll kick it off. Um, last call. This is the portion of the so- show where we wrap everything up, get a final thought out. doesn't have to pertain to the show. Um, but I'm going to go, like, way, way, way ahead on this one. Um, this is a big heads up, and I'm probably going to plug this. For uh, every podcast until the event happens, because I just had so, so much like fun three more podcasts because that's yep. all Jordan wants to do. Yeah, well, I'm like once every two months now. Um, so September 8th is Mayflower Brewery's America's Hometown Throwdown, the fourth one. This is where we're talking about how tightly knit um, all the restaurants are, and I feel like this is super relevant. Um, Plymouth's most talented chefs, which is why I don't cook, um, all compete against each other. Uh, we raise a bunch of money for. The um, Community Action Council, which makes sure that kids don't go hungry in town. Um, but I will be emceeing it again this year. I did it for the first time last year with local legend Jake Hill, musician, baker, uh, weed smoker, farmer. Just, just Jake. Yeah, <laughs> Jake. He's been on the show. Yeah, yeah cool. um, his podcast. Go back, yeah, yeah, go back and listen to yeah, go back. You want to get contact unless, high? Unless you're on the di- uh, Diamondbacks, then please don't listen. <laughs> yeah, <to> yeah. <laughs> He's one of my favorite people on the planet. We co-emcee it. It's September 8th. It is a ways away, but it's going to come up quick, and I really want to create some hype for this because a lot of the people that we've had uh, as guests on this podcast um, compete on this or or been guests on the Inebriot podcast. Yep. You had Jim Casey recently. Uh, Mike Wisdom. Mike Wisdom as well, yep. who, who was the runner-up last year, yeah. uh, young upstart, and kids talented. He's from the Tasty. Uh, Stephen Coe. I don't, have you guys had Stephen We Coe? haven't had him yet. Oh, man, Stephen Coe. I want to be in here for that one. And, and, a, and a, little, <laughs> a little insight into the hometown throwdown. Um, Friday night, uh, Jeff Nardone uh, invited the podcast in some form or another to be there recording. So Fantastic. If you are not from the area, you can just keep listening, and you'll, you'll, you'll hear probably a lot of drunken interviews because that's usually what happens when we're at events like yep. that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it'll... It, You'll hear us eat too. <laughs> Those are the best. Also, ones not there. the first time that's happened. Now. Right? <laughs> and there's a bartender's competition. They did the bartender's competition for the first time last year too. Yeah, Matt Tiso. Yeah, uh, who's been on? My former uh, coworker. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. Former guests. 
Yeah, he was – I think people were writing him off last year because if you know Matt Tiso, if you listen to his interview, he's a very dry, straightforward guy. He's got a great sense of humor but doesn't seem to take anything too, too seriously. And then he you know, showed up to this competition and he laid down the law. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, and it's and, uh, worth seeing the pictures because you got to see him smile for the first time yeah. in his life. Uh, yeah, it actually happened. And yeah. uh, Luna Jen- Jenkins was the runner-up. Right. Uh, she was invited on the podcast but she's not very – a little shy about being on the podcast. So. She works at uh, Malabar now. Malabar in yep. uh, 3V. Fantastic. Yeah. Her. She was great. Um, so, yeah, just uh, keep in mind, I'll, I'll keep reminding you all listening, that uh, September 8th, America's Hometown Throwdown. We'll keep you posted. And if you are in the Plymouth area or even you know within an hour away, it's definitely an event you want to check out, yep. and all the money goes to a really good cause. It's at Mayflower Brewery. And start letting your tomatoes rot so you can throw them at the MC. Yes. <laughs> I just get plastic food to throw I'm at them. Totally cool with that. I mean, uh, Tim Mahoney here. I don't really have too much to go on in that. Um, so just check out Snell's Barkley, and uh, yes. I'll tell. Keep on Facebook. I'll give you all the Game of Thrones and End Game spoilers that I'm going to come coming up as soon as Fish cuts my mic off. And I got to um, uh, own up to a bet that I. Oh lost. yeah, we keep. Keep looking at Jordan's Facebook because he really owes me professional. Uh, we'll we'll ridiculous post him on Bar Talk too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe some inebriar. I might get some posted out for oh, the next sure, art yeah. show. Yeah, but uh, Jordan owes me a funny portrait with Snell's Barkley. So I lost in fantasy basketball in the championship to Dan Mahoney, yep. um, two-time champion. I had no business being in the championship anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> only I, I did. <laughs> I got my money back, and now I get to take a sweet picture with laser beams and Snell's Barkley. So look out for that. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so this is Andy Driscoll of the Inebri Art Podcast, and I've sat in on this podcast multiple times, being you know another podcaster and producer, but not necessarily an industry person until now. You are an industry person. Well, now I am officially. I work at the craft beer cellar. Oh, oh so we can. No uh, yeah, I had my first shift the other night, you know, and uh, hopefully Tatum didn't make a mistake, and she's <laughs> trusting uh, the fox with the hen house. So, uh, hey. She said yes, it's her fault. Whatever remember that, happens. Remember that whole part earlier in the podcast where I said don't hire like your friends. <laughs> you know? So uh, we'll see you on the next podcast and tell you how this experiment We'll goes. be recording somewhere other than the craft beer so. <laughs> <laughs> so no, if you're in uh, Plymouth on Main Street, stop in Craft Beer Cellar, uh, Tatum, Cassandra, myself, whoever else is working here, there's lots of choices of craft beer and uh, fine wines as a charcuterie. Ch- I need to learn to say that charcuterie. word. Charcuterie uh, station now oh, with river, with cheeses and meats <laughs> and snacks. Um, so stop and check it out. And if I'm working, say hello. You'll know me because I'm or the dog. guy that works the here. The guy. The guy. He's got a beard. Yeah, beard. I was going to say something, but I'm going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening again. Oh, and uh, if they want to contact us, uh, they can do it through the Facebook page at Bar Talk Cast. Uh, they can do it through Instagram, Jordan, at Bar Talk Cast. What, do we have three photos up there so far? Uh, yeah, well, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason why we have an Instagram is because I kept saying we had an yeah. Instagram when we didn't, uh, and now on, we don't use it. On Twitter at Bar Talk Cast or email us, uh, Bar Talk Cast at gmail.com. Please do. They, we keep the great questions coming. Yeah, they really are just helping us get through these shows pretty painlessly <laughs> <laughs> thank you again the craft beer seller for hosting us yes craft beer seller you're Always welcome a great time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you from all of us we'll see you guys next time okay thanks for uh checking out the podcast and uh don't forget to check out our other podcast on the inebriar Art podcast network there's uh the bar talk there's Old Colony Cast. There's, of course, the Inebri Art Podcast. And our latest, uh, Retro Redoctopus, a kind of nerd uh, genre podcast that you can check out now, all available on our website at inebri-art.com. And uh, pretty much available everywhere that podcasts are available on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, all those things. And uh, if you don't see it where you're looking, let us know. We'll try to get onto that. As well, and you can also email us at inebriart at yahoo.com with your questions, complaints, and suggestions. And uh, also, if you could take the time to rate and review us on iTunes, that would be phenomenal. That helps us get more exposure and bring more of these great podcasts to your ears. And uh, thanks again for listening.